because Bitcoin is also at a major pivotal level. Do you guys see, and, and by the way, for those of you that have followed Fed decisions or any big decision, jobs numbers, um, anything like that, what you'll notice is charts tend to be at major pivotal levels going into these announcements. All right, so when I look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin has continued to chop sideways over the last couple of days, ever since it tested the 28,500 resistance. And by the way, why is that resistance? All right, because it is the lowest point. Check this out, guys. 28,500, which is the high that we just hit over the last couple of days, it is the low pivot of the mid bull cycle of 2021. So again, this is the symmetry of the charts. This is the power of the charts. So what we know is we're at a pivotal level going into this Fed announcement. If we see a pop on Bitcoin, there's a major level right up here. This is the big one at 30,000. So if we see a rally above 28.5, your next resistance is going to be a pierce of 30,000. For me, I'm going to be looking to inch in some more. Today is an important day when everyone expects the outcome of the Federal Reserve announcement. The key press conference with Jerome Powell usually dictates sudden moves as it creates more greed or fear in the markets, and everyone needs to be ready for that. While we wait, Gareth Soloway, master trader from InTheMoneyStocks.com and VerifiedInvestingCrypto.com, already did his analysis video to prepare everyone. And this is an important one, as it will tell you what to expect after today on the US dollar and Bitcoin. So please pay close attention until the end and take some mental notes. First, let's have a quick look at the macro and the dollar. Now I'm pumped because today is a massively important day. All right, we have the Federal Reserve announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern time, followed by the key, and this is the big one, the key press conference. Now you might say, well, why is the press conference more important than the rate hike or lack thereof? The answer is because that is the guidance that the markets will cue off of. Right now, the markets are pricing in about an 85% chance of a 25 basis point rate hike. I think that's exactly what they're gonna do. I'm gonna explain real quickly, give you guys the rundown of why you're likely gonna see 25 basis points. Okay, go back, rewind two weeks two weeks ago in fact two weeks ago today jerome powell was in front of congress we had just gotten out data that was inflationary and he basically said to congress listen we may have to go 50 basis points after that we saw the banking markets collapse right we saw the banks like credit suisse svb sbny all of these banks collapse stock prices of all these banks collapsing as well i mean take a look at frc recently down huge from the all-time or even 52 week highs so the bottom line is that the fed was put in a pickle here they don't want to go to zero right now because there still is number one inflation number two if they go to zero right if they go to zero interest rates the markets are going to cue off of that that things are a lot worse in the banking sector that things are very, very chaotic, that there's a potential catastrophic black swan event coming. And so ultimately, what the Fed will do is probably thread the needle with a 25 basis point. This way, they don't really raise much, but they raise just enough to kind of keep confidence that they're in control and that they're not that we're not looking at a major banking collapse that's even greater than what we've done. Press conference, I expect him to guide in a dovish manner. He has to guide this economy through this banking process, this banking crisis. The markets and the economy, no doubt, slowing down due to this. He has to see that. And he also has to kind of leave the door open for future rate hikes if that does happen. But I'm looking for a 25 basis point hike and then a kind of pause. So we could be looking at not a pivot. A pivot technically would be dropping rates. But I think after the hike today, you're looking at a pause until more data comes out and more stability in the banking market. What's interesting to me about the US dollar here is that you're coming into this Fed decision with technical support, right? So again, if we look at the dollar, it had this three bar surge, one, two, three. Then bullish consolidation, sideways consolidation after a three bar surge is definitely bullish. We then saw upside in the US dollar. Since the highs here and the banking crisis began, We've seen the dollar start to decline. 
Interestingly enough, look at where we find ourselves back into going into this Fed decision. So interestingly enough, does this announcement, does the Fed calm fears about a banking crisis? If the Fed calms, and think about this, right? If the Fed calms the banking fears down, does the dollar bounce? Does the Fed look like they're in control? Does the Fed say that the bleeding has been stemmed or, or stopped in the banking sector? Does that yield a bounce in the market? If the dollar bounces, does the banking system bounce? Do the bank stocks bounce? But then does technology sell off? Because usually when the dollar bounces, tech sells off. Now, what's fascinating about the last two weeks is that tech stocks have been a beneficiary of money flow that's been going out of the bank stocks, right? We've also seen Bitcoin do well. We've seen gold just ripping higher until yesterday's rally in the banking stocks when it really came back in. So we're really looking at, for me at least, when I look at the dollar chart today, number one, it's at a pivotal, pivotal level, all right? Which means that the decision today is either gonna bounce it, which is the more likely scenario. Remember, everything I do is all about probabilities. There's no, I feel, my gut tells me, that's BS, all right? Anyone who's giving you advice based on what their gut tells you, shouldn't you shouldn't take that advice. Probabilities are the name of the game here. And basically what you're seeing here is the dollars into technical support, so the probabilities favor a bounce in the dollar. If not, and you break lower, guess where the dollar's going? The dollar's gonna head back to the recent lows all the way down here. There's really not a lot of technical support once you break this level. So again, probabilities favor a bounce in the dollar, which tells you that the Fed is gonna try to reestablish the fact that things are not that bad, even though they're gonna take kind of a, a slight hike and pause mentality. They're gonna calm fears and that should give the dollar a bounce. Bitcoin had these awesome moves a few days ago and has been hovering around the 28,000 price level for a while. According to Gareth, this may change today, and this is the reason he may put some shorts when Bitcoin reaches the 30 Kelvin level. Bitcoin is also at a major pivotal level. Do you guys see, and, and by the way, for those of you that have followed Fed decisions or any big decision, jobs numbers, um, anything like that, what you'll notice is charts tend to be at major pivotal levels going into these announcements. All right, so when I look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin has continued to chop sideways over the last couple of days, ever since it tested the 28,500 resistance. And by the way, why is that resistance? All right, because it is the lowest point. Check this out, guys. 28,500, which is the high that we just hit over the last couple of days, it is the low pivot of the mid bull cycle of 2021. So again, this is the symmetry of the charts. This is the power of the charts. You know, so many people look at this chart, right? I mean, you look at this, what you're seeing on my screen right now, and you say, how do I make sense of this? This looks like a bunch of jumbled ups and downs and whips and lefts and rights. And ultimately there is sense that can be made out of it. This is why chart chart reading works. All right. And again, as I always say, make sure to like my stream here. I want you guys to like the YouTube, follow it, make sure you get updated as I go start doing these more on a daily basis, more and more until it is fully daily. And then obviously, guys, check out verifiedinvestingcrypto.com, in the money stocks.com, and verifiedinvestingeducation.com. Education, by the way, the number one thing. Okay, back to Bitcoin. So, what we know is we're at a pivotal level going into this Fed announcement. If we see a pop on Bitcoin, there's a major level right up here. This is the big one at 30,000, even numbers. If you're a technician and you know charting, even numbers matter in charts because they matter to our human psyche. Naturally, up here, guys, up here in our brains, we are drawn to even numbers. All right, we don't talk about 23,752.5. We talk about 50,000, we talk about 100,000, we talk about 30,000, we talk about a million. These even numbers on a statistical basis hold weight. So if we see a rally above 28.5, your next resistance is going to be a pierce of 30,000. For me, I'm going to be looking to inch in some more on the short side of Bitcoin. I'm in the camp that I pay, play probabilities. Doesn't mean Bitcoin can't break 30,000, let's keep that in mind. It just means that probabilities are the way I position myself. So I started a little bit of a short position at 28,450, right around 28,5, and I'll add to it at 30 and change, a pierce of 30. Now, if we establish ourselves above 30,000 and we stay above for like seven days or so, and I'm looking for not just a pierce, a pierce, a close above doesn't mean anything. I want to see a close above. 
that would be significant to me. The chart has to prove it to me before I believe it. All right. So again, a lot of you guys I'm seeing messaging, you know, asking when could we see 12 to 13,000? I'm looking at two to three months out if this 30,000 line gets rejected and we see price start coming back in. All right. So two to three months out, 12 to 13,000, and then likely six to eight months out before we could see that 9,000, 10,000 target if it does. Basically, if we break that 15,000 low, then I actually do think uh, 9,000 is the likely culprit here. Okay, so that's where we are right now. And again, let's keep an eye on the Fed decision. Again, pivotal decision that Bitcoin will likely queue off of. Some experts, including Gareth, said that if Bitcoin breaks the 30,000 price target, this could mean the start of a new bull run, as this is one of the most critical levels for this asset. If that happens today, we're bringing new updates tomorrow on the following price targets, so please leave a like already and subscribe so you don't miss anything. Meanwhile, Gareth is also looking at Ripple, and if you're trading altcoins or want some more profits, check this out. So Ripple's pulling back today. Yesterday, it got a nice little breakout. You had this downward sloping channel. You can see here, it was into this, look at this longer term trend line here. It was right into that lower level right there. That's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool chart. And Ripple did have an ignition to the upside. It did hit resistance, though. Take a look at all this sideways chop over here. That's going to tell you that there's resistance. Now, let's do a quick educational piece here. Why is this resistance? Why is this area resistance? And the answer is very simple. There were a ton of people, and this is really good education, guys. There were so many investors that were buying in this whip, right? It went up. It went down. It went up, which buyers have to be buying it up. Then it came down. Then it went up more, coaxed in more buyers. Then it came down. Then it chopped sideways, more buyers in the chop. Then it went up again, more buyers came in. So basically what you had was a ton of new money was coming into Ripple here in this sideways chop. Then all of a sudden the bottom fell out of Ripple and we went all the way back down. So all of those people that bought over here are now underwater. So what happens? All right, this is human psychology 101, and this is great, great stuff. So when price goes back into that level, how many of us have said, oh my gosh, I was getting crushed on that trade, and now I'm break even, I, I just want to get out. That's the psychological aspect of why you see resistance at this level, because you have a lot of people that bought in over this period that are in the short term saying, Finally, I had my money back. I was down, you know, 20, 30, 40% when it was came off of this level. I'm going to exit the trade here. And that's, again, why you have the pullback here and why you had resistance. Now, does that mean that it can't consolidate and make a bull flag and break out? It certainly could. We just don't know that yet. We have to watch for what type of price action we're seeing here. And that's it for today. Please watch the announcement later and return tomorrow for updated news on Bitcoin. Also, please comment below and let us know if you think Bitcoin is finally thriving after the 30,000 resistance gets broke in. Thank you so much for watching. See you tomorrow for more daily crypto.